This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. Civic Media News, I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Wisconsin Supreme Court will hear a challenge to Governor Evers' 400-year school funding increase. Evers used his line-item veto to make changes that give Wisconsin schools a per-pupil funding boost for the next four centuries. Wisconsin governors have sweeping veto powers, but the courts have put limits on striking single words or letters. Donald Trump campaigns for president in Racine today. It's his first Wisconsin stop since calling Milwaukee a horrible city last week. Milwaukee Mayor Cavalier Johnson spoke with reporters shortly after that. I find it kind of perplexing. I find it kind of strange that uh, he would insult the largest city in Wisconsin because he's running for president. Congressman Scott Fitzgerald tells WISN-TV's up front that Trump was only complaining about the last election. That's where the comment came from, that Milwaukee is just terrible. What he was talking about was the elections in Milwaukee. They're concerned about them. Trump has repeated lies that the 2020 election was stolen from him. Court records say efforts to resolve the American Civil Liberties Union lawsuit against Milwaukee over its plans for protests during the Republican National Convention fell apart in mediation yesterday. The ACLU wants the city's extraordinary event ordinance for the RNC declared unconstitutional. The convention in Milwaukee starts in about a month. Governor Evers is moving ahead with plans for an independent audit of Milwaukee public schools. Bidders have until Monday to respond. Meanwhile, the Milwaukee School Board president says the district is committed to fixing the district's financial problems. A man who brought guns to the state capitol twice last fall will spend a month in jail. Joshua Plesnick brought a handgun to the governor's office in October. He was arrested, posted bail, and came back with an assault rifle after the capitol building was closed. Plesnick was sentenced last week. Small family farms want more help from Washington for conservation programs. Barb Kalbaugh runs a small farm in Iowa. She says large factory farms currently benefit from a double standard. Industrial scale factory farms, even though they're industrial scale, they do not have to go by industrial standards. They go by ag standards. And that's why we have the problem with pollution that we have. That should be addressed in the farm bill. Large farm operators maintain they're always looking for cleaner, safer ways to do business. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. A former Village of Hawkins employee has been accused of stealing thousands of dollars from the village while serving as treasurer. According to court records, 79-year-old Marsha Lyons was charged with theft in a business setting after allegedly attempting to wire transfer nearly $95,000 from the Village of Hawkins library account to JM Bullion, Inc. Lyons reportedly admitted that she had transferred the money to her account, saying she was only borrowing it for a couple of days so she could buy gold. A portion of County Highway B in Dunn County is expected to reopen soon. According to a WEAU report, the County Highway B project is separated into two projects from State Highways 1229 to I-94 and from I-94 to Packard Drive. Dunn County Highway Commissioner Dustin Binder says the portion of Highway B that's north of the Badger Drive intersection could be reopened in the next two to three weeks, depending on whether traffic will be able to move safely. Both projects are expected to be completed sometime this fall. The city of Eau Claire is considering the addition of a new full-time position to go along with new sustainability practices. According to a WQOW report, the Sustainability Advisor Committee will meet this week on the possibility of adding the position, but talks are still in the early stages and they don't yet know how much the new position might cost. The committee is also considering an energy efficiency program, which would encourage old housing units and rentals to upgrade their HVAC, heating, and insulation. The Family Support Center in Chippewa Falls is advocating against elder abuse in honor of Elder Abuse Awareness Month. According to a WQOW report, the organization will spend the month of June displaying information throughout Chippewa County to promote elder abuse awareness and share information on support groups, individual counseling, and violence prevention education. The program will cover things from unattended medical needs to isolation from friends and family to financial fraud schemes. Two police officers who helped to defend the U.S. Capitol on January 6th visited the Chippewa Valley last week, sharing their experience and gathering support for the Biden-Harris campaign. Officers Harry Dunn and Daniel Hodges spoke at a press conference with local leaders in Eau Claire on Friday, attempting to convince residents to focus on preserving democracy over playing politics during the upcoming election. The officers held similar press conferences in a number of other cities across the state last week. 
The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources is encouraging residents to help native pollinators in honor of Pollinator Week. According to a press release, there are about 400 native pollinator species in Wisconsin, like bumblebees, butterflies, and hummingbirds. To help out, residents can plant native plants and trees, provide water and shelter for the pollinators, and maintain a yard free from pesticides and herbicides. There's also a number of volunteer organizations for residents who want to do more. Construction work on concrete bridge decks on U.S. 53 is set to get underway in the coming weeks. According to a press release from the Wisconsin Department of Transportation, Governor Tony Evers signed off on a contract with Norcon Corp. of Schofield to seal the concrete bridge decks that go over U.S. 53 from Eau Claire County to Douglas County. Work is scheduled to begin in Eau Claire next week and will involve some temporary lane closures in Chippewa and Barron counties over the course of construction. Law enforcement authorities are looking for any information regarding a 19-year-old who went missing on Friday. According to the Washburn County Sheriff's Office, Gunnar Hess of Serona told his family he would be going kayaking on Friday and has not been heard from since. Authorities found his truck at the County Road K Namakagan River access site near Trigo, but have found no other signs of him. Anybody with information about his whereabouts should contact the Washburn County Sheriff's Office. And that's what you need to know. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The Packers released their training camp schedule. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Packers have released their training camp schedule with 13 practices open to the public. Training camp begins Monday, July 22nd. I asked Jordan Love what he plans to do this summer as he heads back home to California. Yeah, just keep working. I'm outside of here and getting back with my uh, personal quarterback coach I work with and just continuing to focus on the little details and, and things I want to keep working on. And, uh, you know, each guy has their own preference and whatnot. But, uh, I mean, I've been with my quarterback coach since sophomore year of high school. So, um, definitely someone I'm comfortable with and the details and footwork and things like that that I need to work on. Uh, so it's, it's good work away from here. Baseball, the Brewers' West Coast trip is underway with games in L.A. and San Diego. About a dozen players are from there. Shortstop, Willie Adamas. Yeah, yeah, a lot of guys are really excited to go back to their, you know, roots and, you know, see some family, some friends, and they're probably going to have a lot of fans. We're probably going to have to give them the tickets because they probably have so many guys there. Last night, the crew losing to the Angels 5-3. to three. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Jordan Peele tweeted that his next movie will not be released until October of 2026. The original release date was scheduled for December of 2024. The delay was caused in part by the writers and actors strike last year. There is not much else to report as Peele and the studio are keeping everything on the QT. The project is currently titled Untitled Fourth Film Directed by Jordan Peele, no lie, and will be distributed by Universal. It seems Ben Affleck is only interested in marrying and divorcing women named Jennifer. TMZ reports Affleck and Jennifer Lopez are headed for divorce as Ben spent Father's Day with Jennifer Garner, his ex-wife. To help make sense of his breakup and help Americans deal with the trauma, TMZ is putting out a new documentary on Hulu called J-Lo and Ben, Missed Warning Signs. Oh, please make it a miniseries. TMZ is employing the help of Oprah Hasbin's Dr. Phil and Dr. Drew to inform us why the relationship didn't work, but most of all, why we should care. The Tom Brady roast just continues to create collateral damage. In addition to not being funny, the event made many people sad and put Brady's ex-wife Giselle Bunchen's new relationship with her jiu-jitsu instructor, Joaquin Valente, in jeopardy. Insiders say the roast caused her and her boyfriend relationship stress. In a related story, Giselle Bunchen is dating a guy who teaches jiu-jitsu. Are you wondering where Army Hammer has been? Me neither. But in case you were, Hammer took an industry-imposed leave of absence, taking the hint after being dropped by his representatives and from many projects after a string of women and past girlfriends accused the actor slash trust fund kid of assault, sexual misconduct, and cannibalistic desires. Hammer did admit he's been seeking help and treatment and says he got so much hate from people everywhere he would go, he felt bad for his kids. In his defense, he denied the cannibalism accusations, saying they made him laugh so hard he almost choked to death on a clavicle. It appears that the summer box office is back thanks to the last two weekends. Last week, Bad Boys Ride or Die smoked at the U.S. box office with $56 million. This past weekend, Inside Out 2 almost tripled that and broke records. The animated sequel brought in $155 million in the U.S. alone, smashing expectations and making it the second highest grossing animated film in movie history. Inside Out 2 added another $140 million from only 38 markets overseas, bringing its global total to $295 million in just four days. This is the largest opening weekend for a film since Barbie. Bad Boys Ride or Die showed some staying power with 33 million domestically and sits currently at 215 million worldwide. 
Other big summer openings right around the corner are A Quiet Place Day 1, June 28th, Despicable Me 4, July 3rd, and Deadpool and Wolverine on July 26th. For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Peach Waba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. With your forecast, I'm Corey Hartman. Mostly cloudy today, highs in the upper 80s, winds gust to 30 out of the south. Any shower or thunderstorm could have heavy rainfall, including tonight a low around 64 degrees and still a bit on the breezy side. For Wednesday, storms in 73. Currently 78 degrees. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at wcfw.fm or thetap.fm.